In this video, we'll learn how to solve logistic regression. It builds on my previous video, where I gave an overview of the logistic regression model. As a quick recap, we constructed logistic regression by combining another machine learning method called linear regression with the logistic function. This creates the characteristic S shape that logistic regression is known for. We also saw how it can be used to predict whether students would pass an exam based on how many hours they studied. In a nutshell, we first apply a linear function to the data, then transform it using the sigmoid, and finally predict pass for all students that ended up above level 0.5 and fail for everyone below it. Now to find the curve that best fits the data, we need to minimize a special function called cost function. You can think of it as the price the algorithm has to pay for choosing a particular curve. Notice that this function depends on parameters a and b. This is because every logistic curve is defined by these two parameters. So choosing the best curve can be thought of as finding values for a and b that minimize the cost function. But why is the cost function of logistic regression so complicated? Intuitively, it would make sense to simply measure how far our guesses are from each data point. A typical approach would be to then square these distances and calculate their average. Here is the graph of this function. Remember that we need to minimize it, which in geometrical terms means finding the lowest point of this graph. This is typically done using some iterative algorithm such as gradient descent. You can visualize gradient descent as a ball rolling down a mountain. If we want consistent results, we want the ball to find the lowest point regardless of where it started. So far so good, but let's try a couple more times. You probably noticed that there seem to be two different attraction points. So the algorithm gives different results depending on where we start. These attraction points are called local minima. They confuse the algorithm because it can't tell which one of them is the real minimum. But what if we could get rid of all local minima by modifying the cost function? We will use a trick called maximum likelihood estimator. For each value of x, we interpret the height of the curve at x as the probability of observing 1. The idea is that before we start predicting unknown results, we should choose parameters a and b that maximize the chance of observing the results that we've already seen. By choosing a and b in this way, we make sure that our model will make the best predictions possible. As before, a tick represents a past exam and a cross a failed one. And x-coordinates represent the amount of time each student studied. Let's aggregate study times of each student in an array called x and their respective results in array y. We will now introduce a very useful concept called conditional probability. You can think of it as the probability of observing y given that we have already seen x. For example, we know that the first student studied for a little over 9 hours. Now we ask our model what it thinks the probability is that this student would pass the exam. Since we want our model's predictions to agree with the data, we want this probability to be as high as possible. On the other hand, the last student only studied for 0.3 hours and, unsurprisingly, failed the exam. Here we want our model to predict that the student would fail. So we want p to be as low as possible. Similarly, for other students, depending on whether they passed or failed the exam, our model should either maximize or minimize the value of p. Now, given that some student studied for x hours, what is the probability that they would have the result y? If the student succeeded, then y is 1, and the probability is given by the value of logistic function at point x. If the student failed, then y equals 0, and the probability has to be inverted. We can use this formula to calculate probabilities for each student. Finally, to find the probability of observing our entire dataset, we need to multiply these values together. When we maximize this expression, we will obtain the so-called maximum likelihood estimation for A and B, which is equivalent to selecting a model 
that would give the highest probability of observing our data. It is possible to show that this is equivalent to minimizing the following function, which is called negative log likelihood. While the rigorous proof of this formula is in itself quite interesting, I decided to keep it out of this video. But if you are curious to see the exact math behind it, I added the link to a detailed proof in the description below. If we now plot this new cost function, we'll see that there are no local minima. In fact, this function belongs to the class of so-called convex functions, which allows iterative methods like gradient descent to find the optimal solution. This will give us the optimal values for parameters a and b, and thus solve logistic regression.